Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on celiac artery. The coliac trunk is a major artery of the abdomen. It arises from the abdominal aorta, and supplies many of the gastrointestinal viscera. The coliac trunk is the second branch of the abdominal aorta, where the first branches are the paired inferior phrenic arteries. It arises from the anterior aspect of the aorta, at the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm, at T12 level. After emerging from the aorta, the coliac trunk extends approximately 1 cm before dividing into three major branches, left gastric, splenic, and common hepatic arteries. Of these branches, two go left and one goes to the right-hand side. Collectively, they are the major arterial supply to the stomach, spleen, liver, gallbladder, abdominal esophagus, pancreas, and duodenum. First, the left gastric artery is the smallest of the three branches. It ascends across the diaphragm, giving rise to esophageal branches, before continuing anteriorly along the lesser curvature of the stomach. Here, it anastomoses with the right gastric artery. Second, the splenic artery arises from the coliac trunk just inferior to the left gastric artery. It then travels left towards the spleen, running posterior to the stomach, and along the superior margin of the pancreas. During its course, it is contained within the splenorenal ligament. It terminates into five branches which supply the segments of the spleen. In addition to supplying the spleen, the splenic artery also gives rise to several important vessels. Left gastroepiploic supplies the greater curvature of the stomach. Anastomoses with the right gastroepiploic artery. Short gastrics are five to seven small branches supplying the fundus of the stomach. Pancreatic branches supply the body and tail of the pancreas. The splenic artery has a tortuous appearance, similar to the facial branch of the external carotid artery, and thus is easily identifiable from other nearby vessels. Next, the common hepatic artery is the sole arterial supply to the liver, and the only branch of the coliac artery to pass to the right. As it travels past the superior aspect of the duodenum, it divides into its two terminal branches. The proper hepatic and gastroduodenal arteries. Each of these arteries has multiple branches and variation in the arrangement of these branches is common. The proper hepatic artery ascends through the lesser omentum towards the liver. It gives rise to right gastric, that supplies the pylorus and lesser curvature of the stomach. Right and left hepatic, that divide inferior to the porta hepatis and supply their respective lobes of the liver. And cystic, branch of the right hepatic artery, that supplies the gallbladder. Whereas the gastroduodenal artery, descends posterior to the superior portion of the duodenum. Its branches are right gastroepiploic, that supplies the greater curvature of the stomach, found between the layers of the greater omentum, which it also supplies, and superior pancreatico-duodenal, that divides into an anterior and posterior branch, which supplies the head of the pancreas. For anastomoses, the stomach is the only organ to receive arterial supply from the three branches of the coliac trunk. The left gastric, splenic, and common hepatic arteries. This is achieved through a system of anastomoses along the greater and lesser curvatures of the stomach. Whereas for pancreas, the pancreatico-duodenal arcade is a network of arteries that surround and supply the head of the pancreas. There are two main arteries. Each has an anterior and posterior branch, that anastomose forming a ring structure. Superior pancreatico-duodenal is a branch of the gastroduodenal artery. Inferior pancreatico-duodenal is a branch of superior mesenteric artery. For clinical relevance, the disorders of the celiac trunk. Peptic ulcers. Peptic ulcers in the stomach and duodenum have potential to cause significant gastrointestinal bleeding if they erode into neighboring arteries, usually the gastroduodenal artery. Coliac trunk compression syndrome. The median arcuate ligament occasionally lies anterior to the coliac trunk, rather than its usual superior position. This can cause compression of the coliac trunk that may present pathologically as pain. The pain is thought to be caused by the resulting ischemia of the abdominal organs, though it also may be associated with compression of the coliac ganglia. The treatment of coliac trunk compression syndrome is the surgical division of the median arcuate ligament. Another condition. Splenic artery aneurysms are the most common type of visceral aneurysm, comprising around 60% of the total. The main risk factors for their development are female sex, multiple pregnancies, portal hypertension, and pancreatitis or pancreatic pseudocyst formation. Those that are symptomatic will present with a vague epigastric or left upper quadrant pain. Those that rupture will present with severe abdominal pain and hemodynamic compromise. First-line management option is endovascular repair. This is best done with embolization or stent grafts, once the patient is hemodynamically stable. 
An open repair may be advised in the unstable patient. That's all for this video. Thank you.